What is up guys, Kevin Cage back with another XRP update. I will be making a few short videos in a row because I will be traveling this week and these videos are absolute must-sees. Whether you're a veteran or whether you're brand new to the space, please pay very close attention to this one. So friendly reminder for anybody that thinks that Ripple is just some company and that only works with 300 to 400 financial institutions, I still chuckle at that. Obviously, back in 2014, they joined the Nacha Alliance. Well, who is Nacha? Well, right here. They were founded in 1974. Nacha is one of the country's premier industry groups, representing over 11,000 financial institutions. Wow, it sounds like Swift with their 11,000 partners or even another Ripple Net partner. Finastra integrated with the top 48 of the top 50 banks in the world and has 9,000 customers customers right there. Notice they oversee the ACH, the automated clearinghouse, the electronic network, keyword, that's the backbone of the United States payments. Interesting. Now they even have this payment stack and do not forget about this. Yes, I know that we're trying to build these rails. We're trying to build liquidity before using and leveraging digital assets in the space. We saw the news with even USD, uh, C, USD coin, of course, with Circle and Jeremy Allaire, another firm I believe will IPO in the years ahead, if not sooner. But look, do not forget whose game this was to begin with. The settlement infrastructure, and this is the payment stack. Ripple, right here. This is the transition. Ripple back then was called the protocol. Yes, it was called Ripple Labs. And yes, XRP back in the day was called Ripples. But there is a plan. Now, yes, we have banks like Bank of America. Why is Bank of America listed here? Well, because they were one of the founding members of the Global Payments Steering Group, which is today Ripple Nets. This is not a coincidence. Santander, RP, uh, RBC, some of the biggest groups in the world. Yes, we have messaging and routing and settlement and standards and governments. Yes, this is important. But do not forget the invisible underlying technology that will govern all of this and understand the problem at hand. All right. So next up, we talk about this. You guys get the gist. And also remember, even Don Donahue, the former president of the DTCC, the Fed, before the Fed became chairman of RippleNet years ago. Now, I want to hammer this home and then we're going to go back to reading some very interesting threads because I just want to paint some perspective for newcomers to see the big picture. And remember, doing research is not scrolling through Twitter or even watching a few videos. It's taking this information and applying it. So now we have another massive RippleNet partner that many people forget about, and I reference them all day long. This is D-Locale. They've expanded, of course, throughout China, but also one country that we talk about all the time, Brazil. Now, Brazil and China, both BRICS nations, if you understand the current circumstances, the geopolitical Cold War intention going around the globe, you'd understand how big this is. Right here, these three providers, so notice D-Locale, RippleNet enabled, adds WeChat Pay, Alipay, and Union Pay. Now, please understand, Union Pay is much bigger than MasterCard and Visa. So right here, these three providers collectively capture over 70% of the Chinese market alone, which translated into almost 2.9 trillion US dollars in online payments in 2016. Delocal will enable global merchants to reach 300 million Chinese consumers. Now, of course, if you've even watched Brad Garlinghouse discuss at the Swiss National Bank SNB years ago, alongside people like Christine Lagarde, the current president of the European Central Bank, um, I mean, for God's sake, they're he's on the they're like part of the high level advisory group for the IMF. And people think this is just a coincidence. They forget about it. They they look at XRP at current price and are distracted. But so be it. Right here, cross-border e-commerce in China reached nearly $40 billion in 2015. Interesting. Okay, and that's growing more than 50% annually. And of course, the year is 2021, so I'd assume that it's growing more than ever. E-commerce has been exploding. We have digital payments on the rise, um, also due to things like pandemics and other outside factors that are even accelerating this transition. Right here, China is the global mecca for e-commerce, and we are unlocking the doors for cross-border purchases in this market by bringing all pertinent payment options into one solution. You know what that reminds me of? And this is the CEO of D-Locale. Remember uh, RippleNet Partner? They send $14 trillion per day. Don't believe me? Go Google it. ACI Worldwide. They're also part of the clearinghouse for the United States domestic system. These are the power players. We have Earthport with like the hub and spoke model, multi-currency approach. These are the perfect partners for RippleNet to integrate with. Why were they integrating with all of the big guys? Well, because Pareto's Law, the principle, the 2080 principle, 8020, whatever it's called, Getting the top 20% that actually account for 80% of all the volume or all the output. That is how the game is played. And that's always what I try to apply in the world of business. Right here, online shopping is expected to hit $1 trillion in China by 2020 
on mobile alone. Speaking of mobile, we can see all the digital wallets that are on the rise. We go through articles every other day talking about digital wallets in the future for this whole ecosystem. Now, and we're going to tie it back to Ripple specifically, but I just want to paint a picture for China and Brazil for now, because now it's going to apply to even more news throughout Southeast Asia and Tranglo leveraging XRP. And remember, just a few weeks ago, we also had, um, why am I blanking? Flash FX. And they said, we are building ODL corridors for XRP. They're still building. Yet people are so focused on complaining or talking about Jay Clayton and talking about the SEC allegations. They're going to miss what is being, what's actually being uh, occurring right behind the curtains right here. Delocal's 360 payments platform already supports over 200 local payment methods used in emerging markets, the APEC, Asian Pacific, Latin America, Eastern Europe, and the Middle East. We can think about the UAE, even when Ripple has a regional headquarters now in Dubai, right in that center with what, 2,000 plus power players out there in that region, including local credit card networks, cash payments, and bank transfers. So easily enable, enable, enablers, not disruptors, guys, working with the system, reducing friction. WeChat Pay, Alipay, and Union Pay with just one click. Please look into Union Pay, they are a behemoth. Um, I'm not screaming that they're going to use XRP, but I'm showing you payments are on the rise. Digitization is occurring, and they're not waiting for innovation to happen. It is happening now, on this very day. Yes, US USDC is a stablecoin, regulated, growing, all good and great. I wish it well. I personally like that it's a lot more transparent than Tether, but that is not going to solve the issue at hand with True issues of liquidity, counterparty risk, cross-border payments. It goes on and on and on. And XRP thought of this long ago. And I'm betting on the geniuses that are on the back end, like Arthur Brito and David Schwartz, also working tirelessly on things and applications and networks such as PolySign. Big picture, guys. Big picture. Okay, so... We talked about Nacha, we talked about Delocal, now I want to paint a few other things really quick so Wrath Economy guys must follow. While Ripple has taken a 40% stake in Malaysian cross-border payments to uh, the company Trangler, Tranglo, and we've talked about them, they will work with existing on-demand liquidity corridors, which is specifically using XRP for anybody new, and open new ones, including the new line of credit offerings, which allows these companies to buy XRP, essentially kind of like on a credit card. That's the perfect analogy to use, helping these smaller, medi or small, medium enterprises scale appropriately. True utility, guys, utility. So just last month, Tranglo established four new payment channels. Oh, look, right, connecting to these financial networks. Who do we have? Brazil, Ghana, Nigeria, Uganda. So all throughout Africa as well. Pay attention to that. Of course, you know, South Africa is part of the BRICS nations, but Africa is very, very important with Moja Loop in terms of um, the unbanked and underbanked populations. This is measured over 1 trillion people. This is massive. So mobile banking is an issue and just connectivity, interoperability between these ecosystems and fragmented silos is key. This is the internet of also connectivity. Yes, we'd say Web3, um, kind of the decentralized standard. It's not going to be 100% peer-to-peer anytime soon, people. What I'm saying is these trends are your friends. If we capitalize accordingly, we can definitely catch the wave where it becomes more so distributed rather than entirely centralized with complete systemic risk and issues of trust. You're trusting one player. Remember, three banks, the three power players, even Ashish Burla has been quoted to say this, City, HSBC, and then JP Morgan, essentially monopolize and control 80% of all cross-border flows via their bank ledgers. Or maybe their banks, because the correspondent banking network is just very clunky. Too many intermediaries. But they make a bank, no pun intended, off this transaction banking system that exists today. So ridiculous. So, Ripple is leveling the playing field and threatening all these tier one banks. And yes, they're actually being forced to change thanks to people putting this out there. We know the minister of the UK, financial minister, is talking about the green energy, incentivizing these banks to leverage the green energy blockchains that do not use as much energy consumption um, and less terawatt hours, so to speak. And of course, we know um, their comparison versus other digital assets for this payments use case. So, in the Ripple Insight, they note Amir, and then also Brooks Entwistle, uh, he was that other former employee that, ju that just joined, will join Tranglo's board of directors. Wow, so Entwistle seems like an obvious choice, if only because he's new. So you can't dispute all the building that's going on in Southeast Asia, guys. And Tranglo is even just one little example. We're talking Singapore, Philippines, Malaysia, Australia, you name it. So we can go right here now and just sharing Ashish Birla's tweet. And he's GM of RippleNet. Fresh off the press to start the week, Ripple is acquiring a 40% stake in the cross-border payments hub, Tranglo, to expand on 
You got it, XRP usage, guys. On-demand liquidity in the Philippines, plus the new corridor starting in Southeast Asia. Very interesting. And of course, we have all these hints, you know, they call us lunatics and then it happens. Now, Wrath Economist, one last point, My, uh, minor at best, Trenglo also connects to WeChat and Alipay. Well, so does uh, DLocal and even a few other RippleNet partners. So just showing you those connections do exist. And also, don't even get me started again, 11,000 financial institutions right here with uh, Nacha. We can have Finastro with 9,000. We can talk about Volante with trillions of dollars in value transacted per day. We can talk about ACI Worldwide, which is maybe one of the biggest, $14 trillion per day. And this is what I was going to say. The head of real-time payments at ACI Worldwide, what was he quoted to say in that interview that I uploaded? And this is from a couple years ago, too. He essentially said that Ripple is going to be one of these settlement mechanisms alongside Swift in the future. Now, it may, does it start off slow or does it just happen instantly? I think, or at least I'm just betting, just like Zig Ziglar says, is I prepare for the worst and capitalize on what's to come. So I keep my expectations really low. That way, they're always surpa surpassed every single time. So he even said, not me, not a YouTuber, not a researcher, that Ripple will be one of these settlement mechanisms alongside the payment options in the future. So I just thought that was extremely, extremely interesting. So uh, just talking about Tranglo's connections, and then we have Ali, Alipay partnering with Tranglo, integrates Ripple's cross-border payments. We already know that. And then even Darren Moore sharing this. <clears throat> right here, Tranglo, eyes rising global payments with Alipay and WeChat partnership. 17 trillion mobile payments market. And we already went through the trillions of dollars right here from years ago, 40 billion in 2015. Beautiful. That is what I love to see. Now, lastly, guys, we have Chainlink available on iTrust Capital. Links are in the video description. And also, we have a new up and comer or a new kid on the block that has my attention. Um, and I am very interested in this asset. I'm just going to show it once. This is API3, a governance token, um, essentially building decentralized APIs for Web3. Something to look into if you guys have time. I know um, a lot of people were invested in it at the pre-sale at least like the institutional players like digital currency group which also invested in a ripple and coinbase uh, could be worth a look so this is not financial advice i hope you guys enjoyed this one and stay tuned for the next one